Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath Holland. You know what the hardest part about these videos is? It's not the making them. It's not the talking about the movies. It's holding them up for the thumbnail because I have dropped so many movies so many times. Um, dozens of times. This is our monthly spotlight on Kino Lorber and everything coming out from Kino and all of their partner labels. Several new 4Ks, film noir box sets, some incredible stuff. I want to thank Kino Lorber for making this video possible each and every month. I want to thank you guys for showing up and making this coverage the most comprehensive, uh, most uh, viewed Kino Lorber coverage on the whole internet, I believe. All right, so um, previously, you know, there's always a couple of things that haven't shown up, showed up, shown up um, for the month, right? So for March, I don't yet have Monk season, it's season five. And last month, I didn't have this fear and desire from stanley kubrick this is stanley kubrick's first movie obviously i do now so let's talk about it by the way we're, we got a lot of ground to cover the purpose of these videos is not to review necessarily any of this stuff or even for me to try to sell you on any of it it's to show you what's out there give you a good 360 view right and uh give you the best information that you can then make up your mind for what's best for your collection so this is stanley kubrick's first feature film it is 1953 and it's a 4k restoration now this is a 4k and we do even have alternate artwork here it's two versions of the movie which is very interesting because this has the well, the little scene, now I can't get this back in. It has the little scene theatrical cut. So the theatrical cut was 70 minutes. Um, Stanley Kubrick was, they say on here, it was a 23-year-old cinematic genius. It's quite a reputation to live up to, calling him a cinematic genius, but uh, probably true. Um, 23 years old, this movie comes out, and it gets cut. It gets edited down to 62 minutes. Now we got both versions here on this 4K uh, disc. We got a commentary by Eddie Von Mueller. We have another comment. Well, that's on the 70 minute version. The 62 minute version has a commentary by Gary Girani. Flying Padre, which is a, we, got, we have three Kubrick short films. So for this is kind of Kubrick Ground Zero because they're also giving you the short films. You no, know, I mean Kubrick is well, he's one of the best, isn't he? He's one of the brightest stars we've ever had as far as directors he and, and the, the reputation continues to that's i think that's the cool thing is that even after he's gone we're still talking about kubrick um there's a couple well okay so one of the film noir sets wasn't here last month either i've included that we'll talk about it in just a second i want to blow through these 4ks not blow through i want to cover in a timely fashion <laughs> these 4ks uh this is uh north dallas 40 uh by the way did i there's more to talk about with this as far as the restoration goes. So the brand new HDR of Dolby Vision Master on both both cuts, 4K restoration, 35 millimeter camera negative, uh, and fine grain. They got the 70 minute cut from the Library of Congress, and um, yeah. So there's a lot of pedigree that goes into this, and I no longer do nuts and bolts reviews about 4Ks. They always always look better than what's come before they're never perfect they're always better and i'm just you know we don't do that anymore you, if you want the 4k you know you're getting a better experience but though it won't be perfect uh nick nolte mac davis in the uh the football uh football movie you know it's funny they describe nick nolte on the back of this they like he's an aging football star and i'm like wasn't he still pretty young in 1979 when this came out uh, this is a brand new HDR Adobe Vision Master from a 4K scan of the 35mm original camera negative. So that's the best source material possible. You know, this is coming from Paramount. And um, I have been... I should praise Paramount for really getting their movies out there. You know, I've praised Universal in a, in a, in a realm right now where multiple studios are just kind of holding on to stuff. Universal has been getting a lot of stuff out there. So much of what we talk about comes from Universal, but it also comes from Paramount. And I want to, I want to public, publicly acknowledge that, that I'm really, you know, and again, they're not always perfect. That's not the point. The point is they're not sitting on them. They're getting them out into circulation so that we can see these movies and we can enjoy them. So there's a lot of stuff here, special features wise. And I believe this had, oh no, it did not. It did not have, I think I flipped around. Oh, we got a floater. We got a floater. I believe I flipped around all the alternate artwork that existed. Yeah, that's just uh 
So also, I believe this is also, yeah, also from Paramount, next in the stack, is Paint Your Wagon. By the way, if you guys tuned in to my live stream a couple of weeks ago, you know, I've started to do a lot of my new release coverage live. Not these, because I like to produce these. I really want these to feel focused and produced and not... Uh, not broken up by a lot of conversation, but if you saw my live stream a couple of weeks ago, you got an, ex an early look at some of these because I showed these, um, you know, like three weeks before this video is going up. Paint your wagon. I'm going to say what I said in that live stream. I can't believe, I cannot believe we have paint your wagon on 4K. It's a thing that should not be. It just blows my mind. I remember this movie was very hard to find for a long time. I have the VHS for this around here somewhere, unless I donated it. I might have gotten rid of it once we started to get better versions of Paint Your Wagon. But, uh, I mean, listen, 4K, this is, it's a musical. If for everybody that wants to put Clint Eastwood in a box, we got Lee Marvin, Clint Eastwood, Gene Seberg. This is a, um, a, a really goofy Western, and I love it for it. You know, I love all takes on different, you know, different approaches to the Western. Uh, audio commentary by Lee Marvin biographer Dwayne Epstein and screenwriter, author C. Courtney Joyner uh, and film historian Henry Park. So that's fantastic. Did this have no, no alternate artwork here either. Now I, I feel like I need to check, even though I believe I did my homework, I feel like I need to check. Negative, negative. It just impacted on the surface. Another 4K, Changing Lanes, Ben Affleck, Sam Jackson. I saw this in theaters, probably opening nights or opening day, um, this is a, wow, it was timely when it came out because it was about road rage and people losing their mind and like the breakdown of society. And boy, has it come, it's, it, wow, this movie is 22 years old. I guess that just shows us that nothing is really new, but um, we have aged, we have steered pretty hard into this movie. We have changed lanes directly into this movie, right? Uh, so look, it's a thriller. It's, it's, I like this movie. I, I like it. It's, um, it's got a commentary by the director. It's got a making of featurettes, a writer's featurette, and then deleted and extended scenes. No, I don't even know if there was any alternate artwork that exists for Changing Lanes. This is the only image that I know of this movie. A 4K master from the or a 35 millimeter original camera. Oh no. From the original camera negative. Next up, another, another 4K, The Manchurian Candidates. Remake. This is the remake with Denzel Washington, Meryl Streep, Lee Schreiber, Jonathan Demme, the director of Silence of the Lambs. Um, I don't love this. I don't think the Manchurian Candidate needed a remake. It's one of those situations where I think sometimes the studio is going to do it anyway, and so a director's like, "Well, I'll okay if you're going to do it, I'll be attached to it." Um, I think that first the original is so classic. But what people tell me, you know, I'm, I gravitate to classic Hollywood. What, what the kids tell me is that remakes sometimes, not all the time, sometimes remakes lead them to the original. So that would be uh, a thumbs up <laughs> for this one. I know, it's not that there, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good movie, but we already have a Manchurian candidate that is pretty freaking great. Um, this has the commentary, look, commentary by Demi. It's got, uh, let's see. And, oh, and the co-screenwriter, Daniel Pine. At the Enemy Within, the cast of the Manchurian Candidate, political pundits, Liv Schreiber screen test. That's actually pretty cool to have. Deleted and extended scenes. This is another 4K from the original camera negative. Did this have? It does have alternate artwork. There you go. So that's going to wrap up our 4K coverage. For those of you who are 4K only, Thanks for watching. You're going to miss out on some pretty cool stuff, though. Uh, Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema 17. This was not here. This is the one, the other thing that was not here for the February video. And I was so excited about it. This is the thing I was probably the most excited about because it's a box of Edward G. Robinson movies. Edward G. Robinson, Film Noir. So this is... Um, uh, so they're always... Come on. They're always three movies. 1953, Vice Squad. 1954... Black Tuesday, and 1956, Nightmare. So I am going to hold my tongue on these because, oh, hold on, commentary by Gary Girani, commentary by Gary Girani, commentary by Jason A. Nye, who uh, is um, at the top of his game when it comes to these commentaries. Professor, doctor, 
Dr. J. That's what I called him one time in an email that we were, we were exchanging. Um, film Noir, The Dark Side. What I was going to say is we're going to cover... I have future plans for these, so I'm not going to cover it here. We'll cover it soon. Wink, wink. If you've been paying attention to the channel, if you're subscribed, you know what's going to happen. Because um, you've already seen one of them, right? Uh, film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema 18 is three movies. I think these are all from 55? 1955. Let's see. Uh, City of Shadows is 1955 from Paramount. Uh, Crash Out is 1955. And uh, Finger Man, Frank Lovejoy, Finger Man. That's also 1955 from Paramount. Uh, Jason Nye, Dr. Jason Nye, professor, a film scholar, is doing a commentary here. We got uh, Alan K. Rohde on Crash Out. And we've got Gary Gerani again on City of Shadows. Wouldn't it be cool if I could pop up on one of these releases before too long? Um, Targets. I'm sorry, it's not plural. Target. This is like a family spy movie. Have not revisited it yet. I remember pieces of it. Uh, it's Matt Dillon, it's Gene Hackman, and uh, there, it's like a... It's the Cold War style, but it's in the 80s. I mean, I guess the 80s were st it's still a Cold War. But it's that, you know, I think of spy movies and espionage as like the 60s. But then there's like, gotcha, right? And there's all these movies from this era. I just talked about Out of Bounds. So it's not a Cold War movie, but it is a very kind of, you know, like they're coming for you, that kind of a movie. Uh, so anyway, look, this is um, Gene Hagman, Mac Dillon... Uh, let's see. We got audio commentary by Brian Reisman and Max Every, and a theatrical trailer. Did this? No, no alternate artwork on that either. Let me scoot my stack a little closer to me. Uh, the Whip and the Body is a. It's back in print. Let's put it that way. It's back in print. There's going to be several re-releases in this stack. I'm not going to get into weeds on them because it doesn't matter. Like, well, that came out before. It didn't have a commentary, and it was on a 25 gigabyte disc. Now it's on a 50. You guys have the internet. You can do that research. I'll just try to tell you this is being re-released. And if you want to dig into the nuts and bolts, that's cool. The odds are most of the people watching this video don't know that. They're not interested in that. They just want to know that it's out. So the whip in the body is Mario Bava, who I, for my money, the my, he's probably my favorite Italian horror director. And I guess not just horror, but I really like Bava. I like his visual style. I like his, like, uh, his approach really resonated with me. Not leaning super hard into, um, you know, repression and bondage and all that stuff. See, I say this because the same month that this is coming out, we're getting, it's a Christopher Lee gothic horror movie. We're getting Jess Franco's um, Night of the Blood Monster, right? From uh, from Blue Underground, which it looks great. It's a, a That's on 4K. It looks great. I tend to like this style a little bit better because there's some restraint and I, I don't know what it is about that. I just, I resonate a little bit more with this and I love Bava's use of color. I love his use of the, the, of light and shadow. So this is, uh, we got audio commentary by Tim Lucas. We got um, both Italian and English dubs and then a theatrical trailer. If you say like Italian and English dubs, well, Italian movies were also dubbed. They, they dubbed them. Sometimes the actors in a scene would be speaking three or four different languages. You might have somebody from France, somebody from Spain, somebody from America, somebody from, I don't know, from England, right? Just all over the world. From from Italy, you might have Italian. So everybody would speak their language and then they dub it for whatever market that is, whatever it's going out to, right? And um, so there's no purist, you know, you can't, it's hard to be a purist about it when there is no pure thing. Uh, the Lion in Winter, The Lion in Winter, is uh, this is uh, it's been a long time since I've seen this one too. I don't know if I've watched this since the late '90s, to be honest with you guys. Peter O'Toole, Catherine Hepburn. See, I watched it probably too young, and I was like, this feels very mature. This feels too old for me. Like not not old in the sense of like this movie is old, but the characters are old. It's dealing with decline. It's dealing with aging. It's dealing with like. It's I mean the that's in the title, the Lion in Winter. It's like the winter of you know of life basically it's kind of a I, i'm also thinking what year is this 1968 it makes me think of talking about to you to, about this with you guys it makes me think of robin and marion where sean connery and maid marion but she's not a maid anymore well she I guess she's a maid because she's become a nun right um audrey hepburn and it's just sad it's just like once we were great but we're not anymore now we're gonna die 
And it's so that, you know, there's a kind of like a fatalistic, we're getting older. And, but now I'm older, right? Now I'm older. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to revisiting this. This is um, from MGM. We have a commentary by director Anthony Harvey. And um, we have, let's see, interview with the sound recordist, Simon K. Then theatrical trailer. I do like this artwork. And I am, I am looking forward to revisiting it. Um, it's, 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 medieval you know it's it's historical it's a i should mention it's a historical drama king henry the second is uh is uh, is peter o'toole and um his queen is uh eleanor he- Catherine hepper and they engage in a battle of royal wits that pits elder son richard played by uh hopkins anthony hopkins silence of the lambs reference number two clarice um it's just fun to do i could drop a fava beans reference i could also drop a um Oh, hold on, you guys. Nigel, uh, John is played. It says Richard and John, King Richard, uh, Prince John, right? That whole thing, you know, sort of Robin Hood. That's why I thought of Robin Hood, I guess. Uh, but it's Nigel Terry, Nigel Terry from Excalibur, which is great. I, I was thinking about Excalibur the other day. Oh, I was thinking about it because I bought the digital. I've got the Blu-ray, and I was like, I want to add the digital my co- to my collection too. Redundancy of my collection, right? Brain Donors, a movie I have never seen. It's the Zucker Brothers. Um, I when this was announced, I was like, the Zucker Brothers. This is 1992. It's um, um, uh, what what is this cat's name? <laughs> what can it? John Turturro. I could not think of Turturro's name. Uh, it's, they, they're really like in the tradition of Abbott and Costello, the three stooges and the Reagan administration. Okay. So you're comparing them to the great comedy teams and then you're making a political reference. So look, swinging up, right? Swinging hard up. So, I mean, I don't know how, again, have not seen this could be really funny. I mean, the Zucker brothers, I revisited top gun. No, not top gun. <laughs> That's not the top secret. I revisited top secret like a month ago laughed like oh my goodness that movie was is so funny it's the zucker brothers and it's so funny and uh i don't know this is one that's gonna it's been flying under my radar so i'm interested to see how it how it holds up we got a commentary by lee gambin uh it's a uh, dennis dug dennis dugan moderated by film critic and author lee gambin uh it's basically lee and the director because the zucker brothers wrote it they didn't direct it and then an audio commentary by film journalist stacy lane wilson so we shall see. All right, we're getting into my stuff, right? Well, we film noir. Oh yeah, we're, but this is more my stuff. Death rides a horse. This is a re-release. This movie's already been on Blu-ray before. Um, it's back. It's better. It's got a commentary by Alex Cox, the director of Repo Man, which is an incredible film. He loves westerns. I talked about somewhere recently. Maybe it was even in that live stream. Like Alex Cox does when he does his talking head segments for documentaries. He's in front of a bookcase, and there's all sorts of books about Westerns there. He has really studied American. He's not American. He has studied American Western culture. And so I know he is extremely qualified to talk about this. Obviously, it's the Spaghetti Western Classic. We got Lee Van Cleef. We got John Philip Law. Um, who was uh, Julio Petroni is the director of this movie. And uh, there's no restoration notes on the last couple of these. This is Paramount. Oh, brand new HD master from a 4K scan of the 35 millimeter OCN. Lion and Winter did not have, yeah, that's MGM and it had no restoration notes. This is MGM with no restoration notes. And it did not have, did I, did I do this? Yeah, it's got the same, same art. Uh, a Fistful of Dynamite, AKA Duck You Sucker, Ladder, Lesser, Leone. How's that for some alliteration? It's good. I like it. But um, Sergio Leone directs A Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. And then, I think after that, this is 71. I think I think that's the order. Then after that, he directs A Fistful of Dynamite with Coburn. Rod Steiger, James Coburn. And it's just it's something is a little different. Something has changed. Still worth watching because it's Leone. It's Sergio Leone, one of the two great Sergios. You got Sergio Leone, and you've got Sergio Corbucci, the director of Django. And it's uh, it's good. It's for me. It's 157 minutes. Leone, the more the further he got into his you know career, the bigger the movies got. And I'm like, buddy, let's you know, that's a thing for me. Is directors that 
their work is too long, right? And we're getting a Costner Western in two parts. My criticism of Costner, if going back to Dances with Wolves, I'm like, it's good, but let's cut 30 minutes, man. Waterworld, cut it, man. Cut cut it down a little bit. Um, uh, the Postman, right? Now we're, I, mean, I know I'm on a Costner, Costner jag here, but like, it's a good movie. It'd be better if it was a little bit shorter. You don't want to wear the audience out. But listen, some people love long movies. Uh, Ileana Douglas says that Martin Scorsese would make movies that lasted an entire day if he could. So some people just love to live in that world. Uh, it's good. It's a spaghetti western that is, you know, it's one of the one of the masters at is at not the peak of his game, but doing okay for himself i'll say that what hold on what were the extras here we got no restoration notes audio commentary by alex cox he's back you guys and another audio commentary by uh film historian sir christopher frailing who is a master at this stuff six featurettes two image galleries theatrical trailer and radio spots more westerns you guys i told you this was my section the long riders uh it's a 2017 4k restoration it's directed by walter hill Great movie, right? I mean, look, it's the, like the dynasties. It's the it's the it's the Western dynasties. We got David Carradine, Keith Carradine, and Robert Carradine. So there's the three brothers there: James Keach and Stacy Keach, Dennis Quaid and Randy Quaid, and then Christopher Guest and Nicholas Guest. So they got all these real life Hollywood families to star in this Western. Nothing else like that that I can really think of that's been done to this degree. There's a whole disc here. Mm, I said 2017 4K restoration. I said that. This is MGM. There's a whole second disc. It's a Blu-ray. It's not a 4K. It's a Blu-ray. But there's a whole second disc of just special features. So we got an audio commentary by Howard S. Berger, Steve Mitchell, Nathaniel Thompson. Uh, interviews with Keith Carradine and Robert Carradine. Stacey and James Keach. Randy Quaid and Nicholas Guest. So Dennis did not show up for that. Got Randy, but not Dennis. Uh, interview with Walter Hill. Composer Ry Cooter. Sidebar, didn't Rye Cooter teach, if memory serves, Rye Cooter taught Keith Richards the open core tuning where he could just like hammer on, like that, it's basically the open tuning that he used for the rest of the Rolling Stones all the way up till now with like Start Me Up, all that stuff. Like once you learn that open tuning, it unlocks like 250 Rolling Stones songs. And I think Rye Cooter taught Keith Richards that. And he's like, if I knew he was going to do use it that heavily, I wouldn't have taught it to him. Um... Outlaw Brothers, The Making of the Long Riders, The Northfield, Minnesota Raid, that's the anatomy of a scene, and the slow motion, Walter Hill on Sam Peckinpah. He, you should probably get this. If that sounds good, you should probably get this. You, you need that in your collection. Oh, I'm coercing. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to coerce. I told you I'm not going to try to convince you to get anything, and I, I, I shouldn't do that because I really, like, I'm just the messenger. I... I get tired of people telling me that their wallet hates me. Your wallet shouldn't hate me. You should do what you what's best for you. Um, but I like that release a lot. I like that movie. I like the, I like that's it's it's good stuff. Rent a cop. Uh, another one that I'm like I'm sorry. <laughs> what? This is a I, look look. I don't know that this movie works. I don't think that Burt Reynolds and Liza Minnelli really have any chemistry. But we have been blessed with a plethora of Burt Reynolds in the last couple of years or so. And even the movies that he made that don't work, it's Burt Reynolds, right? It's Burt Reynolds. So this is a thriller. And again, I I don't know how this happened, but I'm glad we have it. I'm glad that it's an option for us now and it's back into circulation. Not everything has to be, you know, well, I think it's important to collect your favorites, but I don't want to undervalue the value, the, the, I don't want to undervalue the importance of discovery. And with streaming being where it's at right now, it's it's kind of hard to discover things. And I know a lot of you guys shop Kino Lorber because their releases are very affordable. And they're even more affordable when they go on sale. And Rent-A-Cop is something that I think a lot of people are going to be watching that never would have watched it because it's Burt Reynolds. And I think that's pretty cool. So this is an audio commentary by Lee Gambin with uh, actor Richard Ma- Masur and the theatrical trailer. I do not think this had... yeah. No alternate artwork there. The President's Analyst, Coburn. I've talked about this movie before because a lot of, you know, this got, a lot of the stuff we're talking about is getting released in different territories by different companies. So I'm covering them two, three times. Uh, Coburn is, I love Coburn. He's got this real naturalistic style. And even when he's not in a great movie, 
He's pretty watchable in the movie. So this is a HD master by Paramount Pictures from a 4K scan of the original camera negative, 35 millimeter. Why no 4K? We know why. Um, and if you don't know why, check the comments because like 26 people are going to tell you why. So we got audio commentary by Julie Kurgo with filmmaker Peter Hankoff and an audio commentary by Tim Lucas. Uh, what year is this? 1967. So I like these 60s like gritty thriller slash espionage or crime movies. I, I like those things. They feel very... I guess we call them dad movies now. You know, I, I hear, did I tell you guys, I think I've told you that this before. I'll tell you again. Like I was a, I was one black Friday, which I don't do black Friday. Black Friday doesn't really exist anymore. But one black Friday, a few years back, I was hanging out at the media rack at target. And it was uh, the Ford V Ferrari was on, uh, on the, on the rack for, for sale for really cheap. And the, there were teenagers around and they were like, what a dad movie. Ford V Ferrari is made for dads. And I'm uh, being a dad. I was like, that's pretty legit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the Lincoln conspiracy. I like the dad movies. Now I've aged into dad movies is I guess what I'm saying. The Lincoln's conspiracy. I, I've never seen this. It's in 1977. Uh, it's an eye opening tale of speculative fiction for anyone interested in one of the most significant events in American history. It's the real story of who killed Lincoln, but it's, you know, his speculative fiction, right? So we got audio commentary by director James L. Conway, moderated by film historian Howard S. Berger. Howard S. Berger's all over these releases. Good for Howard. Uh, all right, we're that's so that's King Wilbur Studio Classics. That's the stuff that I feel the closest to. I want to be very very clear about that because if I don't have a lot to say necessarily about some of the stuff we're about to talk about, it's just because I gravitate to studio pictures. I love Hollywood. Uh, particularly Hollywood, 1970, 19, really 1960 and earlier. Uh, oh, so this is Cohen Media Group. These are going to be like the Kino Lorber and the partner label stuff. So this is Cohen Media Group driving Madeleine. It's a seemingly simple taxi drive across Paris. It evolves into a profound meditation on the realities of the driver and his fare, a 92-year-old woman whose warmth belies her shocking past. Interesting premise. Uh, we got a bonus, inter bonus features are an interview with the direct director, Christian Carrion. And I think that's the only feature here. So there's that. One of the things I've learned is that as much as I resonate with stu deep, deep studio pictures, a lot of you guys that are watching these videos resonate with this other stuff. So that's one of the services of this video. Again, why I'm not trying to sell you on anything, I'm just trying to cover it, to do the best that I can to talk about it and let you know. Because a lot of you guys are into stuff that I'm not necessarily into, which is awesome. Because that's, look, that's... <laughs> All the colors of the rainbow, right? Um, this is a double feature. Two films, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to attempt this because I'm sure that I will probably not do a great job. But this is a double feature. The Little Girl Who, sell, who Sold the Sun and Le Franc. So they're both, it's kind of like mid-length movies. So I guess one of them is 45, they're 45 and 46 minutes long. We have audio commentary on both films and a documentary about the director. So I'm going to flip this around, let you guys freeze it, read it, love it. <laughs> this is interesting to me. As soon as this got solicited, I was like, what's this? This is Archangel, uh, a tragedy of the great war. It's a 4k transfer from the original camera negative. This is a Kino Lorber film. It's a new movie. Destined to become a monumental cult classic, says Variety. A fascinating fetishist delirium. Creepy and beautiful, says Jonathan Rosenbaum from the Chicago Reader. Literally a film like no other, Archangel is a weird, wild, and extraordinary photo play that is both a melodrama and a deadpan parody of the silent film style. With striking black and white cinematography and stylized set design, Guy Madden's second feature, following up Tales from the Gimli Hospital, which I believe we talked about here don't remember how long ago it was. Time has no meaning. Uh, is a tale of obsessive love from one of Canada's and the world's most original filmmakers presented in a beautiful 4K restoration. We got a new audio commentary by the director and a re-release trailer. So it's not vintage. It's not old. And it's, it's a new movie using the silent style. The like the 1920s style. That's interesting to me. Uh, this is from Kino Classics, The Soldier's Tale. It's an animated film from 19, this is 1984. It's um, an Emmy-winning animated classic by the renowned New Yorker illustrator R.O. Blechman. Blechman? 
uh, based on Igor Stravinsky's 1918 composition. So it's about a young soldier who returns from war, and um, I'll show you a little bit. But it's animated. Adult, I'd say adult animation, probably. Uh, audio commentary by the director, animator, and associate producers. No Room at the End, a short film by R.O. Bluckman. The Hand of R.O. Bluckman, a collection of animated shorts and commercials, and a theatrical re-release trailer from 2023. So that's that's cool. <clears throat> the Wind of Ayahuasca. So this is another Kino classic. Uh, I'm not going to read all this. But it's in I Iquitos, Gateway to the Peruvian Amazon. This character lives on the margins, sometimes as a sex worker, haunted by the memories and folklore of her ritual childhood. She meets a guy, they take ayahuasca to like, like, let's get to the bottom of that. And they take ayahuasca and it goes to, what is it, how do they, how do they phrase it? It was the, it was the first film to offer, to offer an authentic and honest depiction of an ayahuascan healing ceremony. Uh, performed by Delgado, an actual ayahuascaro who served ayahuascaro who served as technical advisor on the film, and his mother Alicia Va uh, Vida. Uh, anyway, it sounds interesting. Radioactive. This is a documentary about women of the women of, the women of Three Mile Island, a film by Heidi Hunter. Sorry, Heidi Hutner. Um, a stunning film and asks the important question, should we or shouldn't we, with nuclear energy? A must-see tour de force for anyone who cares about our energy and the future of our planet. They've got Jane Fonda on here talking, so uh, some of you guys are going to be gravitating to that. Some of you guys are going to be going away from that. I We have all kinds here. Everybody's, you know... Um, it's so interesting because I can just... Tell, I'm, I always know, I'm like, well, this is going to divide people. That's just life, right? Life, life divides people. It, it's an interesting, do, an interesting documentary subject that examines the 1979 Three Mile Island meltdown, the worst commercial nuclear accident in U.S. history, and its aftermath. It uncovers the never-before-told stories of four intrepid homemakers and their local community's case against the plant operator, all the way to the, to the Supreme Court, and a young female journalist who's caught in the radioactive crossfire. That's an interesting. I mean, that is a compelling premise. Because it's real people. It's not. It's not fiction. It's real. It really happened. Uh, inside the yellow cocoon shell. This is a. Was this a Vietnamese? I, you know, I researched these to the best of my ability before I hit record here. But yeah, Vietnamese film. That some sometimes they blend together because I haven't seen them right. So uh, it's the winner of the Camera Dealer at the Cannes Film Festival, a prestigious Andre Bazin Prize. Uh, so let's see. It's a film debut. The enthralling work from Vietnamese filmmaker Pham Tien An. I hope that's close to right. It's a reverie on faith, loss, and nature expressed with uncommon invention and depth. The sudden death of a sister-in-law brings unexpected responsibilities to our character who is reluctantly tasked with bringing his five-year-old nephew, Dao, to the countryside hometown. Anyway, um, flip this around. You can read the whole thing, including all the hype from critics. There's another one. Inshallah, a boy... Terrifically tense, a gripping social drama that morphs into a masterful thriller, says Variety. A widow pretends to be pregnant with a son in order to save her daughter and home from a relative from a relative exploiting Jordan, Jordan's patriarchal inheritance laws. This thriller from the Cannes Film Festival and Toronto International Film Festival is Jordan's official entry for Best International Film at the Academy Awards. Space, The Longest Goodbye. Another interesting documentary premise. Uh, in the next decade, NASA will send astronauts to Mars for the first time, separated from Earth and unable to communicate with ground in real time. It's paging interstellar, right? Crew members will experience extreme isolation that could gravely affect the, their three-year journey. This Sundance premiering documentary follows a savvy NASA psychologist tasked with protecting daring space explorers. So it's a documentary about the isolation of space and being in the middle of nothing. That's that's interesting too, right? Did it have any special features? No. Uh, the Fox. I look. Okay, so this is a. I'm probably never gonna watch this movie, and I'll tell you why. So it's an introverted young farm boy, indentured and seemingly abandoned by his poor family as a child, volunteers for Austria's army, but soon finds himself part of Nazi Germany's vast military machine. When he discovers an orphan fox fox cub, he adopts it and clings to it as the last vestige of his humanity amidst the carnage of World War II. So. I don't have to watch this movie to know it's probably not going to go well for the fox because if he's holding on to the fox as a symbol of his humanity, 
in the middle of World War II, in the middle of the Nazi regime. I don't know. And they describe it as profound, inspiring, and heart-wrenching. One of the best animal-human bonding dramas you will ever see. Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to go there, but I know a lot of you guys, like, paging Marley and me, I, I don't think I can do that. But for those of you who are interested in this, it is, it's out. It's out now. Glory to the Heroes. There have been a few documentaries lately about the uh, the war in Ukraine. And here's another one. So in June 2023, Russia destroyed uh, Kakova. Uh, anyway, they're they're going to Ukraine and talking to the people there. And um, just it's a look from the inside. And I'll flip this around. Let you guys read all that. And this is going to be our last one here, excluding Monk Season 5 because I don't have it. Paris Police 1905. So this is the sequel series to uh, Paris Police 1900. This is an inspired by real events. Paris Police 1905 continues to follow Inspector Antoine Juin. Oh, Ju Juin? I am. It's Christmas Eve, and he is sent to investigate the discovery of an unidentified corpse in Paris. It's, it's recreating early, early 20th century Paris, and it's a series, and it comes from Canal Plus in association with uh, is is it megahertz? Let's see. Hey, there's a coupon, guys. Uh, so it's two discs. It's a two DVD set totaling. I'm curious how many minutes this is. 321 minutes. It is in French with English subtitles. There are no features, but it's the whole series in one package. So a lot of ground we covered in this episode. Uh, we can tell we're getting closer and closer. to like We're getting further in the year because we went from like like 14 releases to like 22 releases now 29 i think releases in this well that's counting the noir box sets as one there's three movies in each of those so you do the math on those and it's actually closer to three dozen releases but a lot of good stuff man a lot of good stuff to discover i want to know what you're watching what you're checking out which of these movies you know let's um there's gonna be somebody who's upset that movies have been re-released it's gonna happen I'm not going to comment on that. What I would like is people who have seen some of these movies and what you think about them because that's the, just the direction I want to go. That's that, this, these, All of these videos are an excuse to talk about movies. So I've told you what's out now and you don't have to buy them for us to talk about them. You savvy? You know what I mean? We don't have to spend money to talk about movies. So let's celebrate movies. Let's talk about like Paint Your Wagon, Ambitious, flawed but so interesting right so interesting uh i got these macho actors in a very non-macho you know very very interesting setting i love but people have been trying to put clint eastwood in this box for so long and you watch a movie like breezy or something and you're like oh he's a lot of different things he contains multitudes that eastwood guy um Let's talk about movies. What have you seen? What do you want to talk about? Let's do it in the comments below. Please subscribe to these. Uh, to subscribe to my channel, basically. More important than ever before, subscribing keeps you up to date on what I'm putting out when I put it out. The algorithm is uh, Jeff from Films at Home. The video I just posted a few days ago with Jeff at Films at Home. I, he said the algorithm is a beast. And he ain't kidding. The algorithm controls way more than it should. One way you can fight that is by subscribing. And doing the thumbs ups because the more you do that, then the algorithm goes, oh, they want to see these serial at midnight videos and it starts feeding them to you. Um, that's the best thing you can do. If you want more serial at midnight, you can support on Patreon. You can support via YouTube memberships. I try to do an exclusive video every single week. There's early access for members. Uh, a couple of videos, you know, here and there we'll, we'll do, or a couple, you know, do early access for things. They get to see it first before anybody else. So there's real benefits, but the big takeaway from that is it's supporting an independent creator because I don't do sponsorships. We're not talking about mattresses or stamps or food services where you don't have to, like, you know, with uh, with Green Apron, you never have to worry about where dinner is going to come from. Like, uh, the no, we don't do that. Uh, is, I'm not shilling things to you. We're, we're talking, it's you and it's me and it's a stack of movies. One way you can support Serial at Midnight is doing those things, right? And you can support by subscribing, thumbs ups, by leaving a comment below. All of this stuff, actually super important. I say it every video, still less than half of you guys have subscribed. I'm not sure why. I don't know why you don't want to see more videos. If you do, you got to subscribe. If you're watching on your TV and you're like, well, I don't know how to do that on my TV, press up on your remote controller there's going to open up a window. There's a, a round Serial at Midnight logo. You just bop over to that. First of all, click the thumbs up while you're over there. Hit that thing. 
hit the circle, subscribe, done. You did it, right? It's that simple. Guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate Kino Lorber. I love making these videos because I get to just geek out about movies. I get to geek out about the thing that I love. Uh, so they're a lot of fun for me. I appreciate you. Take care. Till next time, I will catch you later.